This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com We all know that on Sukkot, during benching, we say Harachamon, Hu Yakim Lanu, Esukas David Hanayfalas. The Merciful One, He should raise up for us the fallen Sukkah of David. Now, what is that referring to? We all know that's referring to the Beis HaMikdash. Where it's a tefillah, the Rebbein should uphold and rebuild the third Beis HaMikdash. Now, could someone please tell me, what in the world does this have to do with Sukkot? Because the, the Beis HaMikdash is called Sukkot David. I mean, that's a nice play on words. But why do we specifically daven for the rebuilding of the third Beis HaMikdash on Sukkot? I mean, we could, we could say that tefillah any day of the year. What are the, you know, why don't we say it Erev Tisha B'av? Why don't we say it Pesach? Why? Because you could call the Beis HaMikdash a Sukkah? And you can't call it a piece of matzah, so we don't down for it on Pesach, we down for it on Sukkot? I mean, that's a little weak. No? Why? Because, because the Beis HaMikdash is called a Sukkah, that's why we daven for the Beis HaMikdash is re, re, to be rebuilt on Sukkot? Okay. Now, Baisai, today is the perfect day to learn about the following topic. Rain. <laughs> you plan this? <laughs> no, first came the shear, then came the rain. Yeah, the rain. <laughs> today is the fir- perfect day to learn about rain. And we're going to learn t- something today which is mind boggling. You probably thought you knew where rain came from, right? No. Whatever you're thinking, whatever you learned in high school math, whatever you learned in college math, in college science, whatever you learned in, you know, earth science. That's not really where rain comes from. We're going to learn today where rain comes from. We're going to learn today why on Sukkot we daven for rain, right? At the end of Sukkot, on Shemini Atzeres, we have Tfilas Geshem. Why do we daven for rain on Sukkot? What does Sukkot got to do with rain? Because it's the time of the rain season. It's the time of the rainy season. Okay, we're judged on water. What does Sukkot got to do with the rain? Uh, we're going to learn something very interesting. We're going to learn something very interesting. Look, we don't want it to rain because if, it, if rain on Sukkot is a sign of a curse. And anyway, we don't want it to rain right after Sukkot because the people got to get back to their homes. So why are we doubting? What does rain got to do with Sukkot? Look in the Gemara in Sanhedrin. The Gemara takes us into a conversation that took place between two individuals. One was the name, by the name of Elio Anavi, and the second guy's name was Achav. And they were in the house of a man by the name of Chiel. Chiel had lost his children because his children had built up Yerichai, and Yehoshua ben Nun put a curse on whoever builds up Yericho that what, what's going to happen but when they lay the foundations will, will come at the death of the firstborn and when the city is up their last child will die. And Chiel was wondering why did his children die? So they said, Elio says, because they built up Yericho. So Acha said, no, come on. You believe the curse of Yeshua ben Nun was effective? Mm-hmm. If the curse of Moshe was not fulfilled, what was the curse of Moshe? Moshe's curse was the chsiv. That if you turn away from the Torah and you serve other gods, and it says, God will get angry at you. Right? The Pasuk says that if you turn away from the Torah, God is going to Stop the heavens. He's going to prevent the heavens from giving down rain. He says, what? Moshe Rabbeinu places a curse that if we survive, it's not going to rain. Bahu Gavra, and that guy, meaning me, Okim Kechavim, he has set up idols, I'll call Telem Betelem, on every furrow of Eretz Yisrael. So it's not... So I'm not a big tzaddik, right? I definitely have fulfilled that which the Torah says, don't serve idols, because every furrow in Israel is full of idols. And the rain is so great, it doesn't let me go bow down to my idols. So I don't get what's going on, Achav says. Achav says, come on, these curses are meaningless. 
Because Moshe Rabbeinu said, if you serve idols, there's not going to be any rain. I have put up an idol on every pharaoh in Israel, and it's, the rain is, doesn't stop falling. I can't even get to all my idols because there's so much rain. So you're going to tell me the curse of Yeshua, his student, did come true? If the curse of Moses, if the curse of Moshe Rabbeinu is not coming true, then the curse of Yeshua Benun certainly will not come true. Miyad. So what did Elio do? He got fed up. Elio got fed up with this audacity of Achav. He said, By the life of the God of Israel, there will not be rain or dew. What does the end of the Pasuk say? Unless I say so. Now the question is, what do you mean? It's not up to Elio Anavi, it's up to God. And the Gemara tells us in Masech Tatainis, by Yizam and Aleph, that rain is one of the three keys that only God has control over. So what's Elio Anavi saying? He'll be in charge of the rain. He prayed. And he was given the key of rain. And he got up and he left. What happened? God came to him. Leave here, Upanisa Lcha Kedma go to the east, Binastat Minacha Chris, go hide in Nacha Chris. What's Elio gonna eat? The Harvim Nivim Lilachem, the ravens will bring you food, Ubasar Baboker. Mehecha, where did the meat come from? Am Ravida Marav, Mi Betavki the Acha from Achav's uh kitchen. What happened? Bahimi Kates Yomim The days passed, Vaiva Shanacha on the river dried up. Because there was no rain. The rivers dried up because there was no rain. God saw that there was a lot of uh, anguish, pain in the world. So what did he do? Hashem wanted to take away the key of rain from Elio. How is he going to do that? Basically, Elio has, stays in the house of the Tsarfis. Tsarfasa. And what happened to the son of the Isha Hatzarfis? Her son died. And Elio Anavi was indebted to her. So what did he do? He prayed to be able to revive the son. So God said, wait a second, you want the key of Tchiyas HaMesim also? He davened to have the Tchiyas of the revival of the dead. Amalei. Hashem said, wait a second. There are three keys that I'm in charge of. Tchiyas HaMesim, rain, and childbirth. You want two of the three? People are going to say, the master only has one and the servant has two. So so Hashem said to Elio, look, we'll make a deal. You give me back the key of the rain, I give you the key of Tchiyas HaMesim. And what happened? Right after Eliyahu revived the kid, Hashem said, okay, sorry man, you got to bring the rain. Okay, that's the story. So the Chassam Soifer wants the Chassam Soifer has a bunch of questions on this episode. Okay, this is a mind-boggling Chassam Soifer. You'll say it over when you go for Shabbos. They're gonna get a lot of Hana. They're gonna give you two extra pieces of herring if you say over this Chassam Soifer. He said this over the Hesmo. I am who? Oh, he said over the Hesmo. Reb Chaim Hersh. Don't just say it over. You say it's in Mechilik Beis, page Shin Ayin Vav. The Hesmo of Reb Chaim Hersh. They're not gonna know this one. Who's Reb Chaim Hersh? <laughs> and he has um, he has a few questions if you know when did Elio make it rain again? after the battle with the Nevi'e Habal yeah, with the Nevi'e Habal so Achav summons all the Nevi'e Habal to Hara Carmel and for, right, so first Elio says there's not going to be rain Ki'im Lefi Devari then Hashem comes to Elio and he says no, go bring back the rain so before he brings back the rain, Elio makes a whole, you know, thunder and lightning show. At Hara Carmel, he gathers together all of Klal Yisrael. He's Mekadeshim Shemayim Barabim. And everyone screams out what we just said on Yom Kippur. Hashem hu Kim, Hashem Kim, right? We say this every night. Vayar kalam vayuplo p'neim vayemru. Hashem Kim, Hashem Kim. Fine. Does anybody remember? In Malachim Aleph, Parak Yudches, Pasuk Mem after the episode of Elio and Hara Carmel, a cloud came down. Anybody know how big the cloud was? A small cloud, the Pasuk says, Av Kitana, like the palm of a hand, and it brought the rain. 
So it's not like the whole heavens clustered in clouds. One small, tiny cloud came down. So some Sefer has a number of questions, four questions, starting at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines down in number three. Usually the Daik Tuva. Hashapir Kamar Achav. Shall I also love Kalasa Shamash Rabbeinu? Ma Teretz Lai Elio Azeh. Achav says to Elio, Elio, you think the curse of Yeshua came true? Even the curse of Moshe didn't come true. Moshe said, if you serve Abba the Zara, it's not going to rain. And I serve Abba the Zara in every square inch of Eretz Yisrael. And it rains and rains and rains. So what was the answer to that? What's the answer? That's what Hashem said. If it's not, if you serve Abba the Zara, it's not going to rain. Question number two. What did Eliyahu mean? Ki im lefi divari. It will only rain with my mouth. What does that mean, with your mouth? And number three. If Eliyahu wanted to make it rain, if God said, okay, Eliyahu, it's time to rain, time to bring the rain, why did Eliyahu have to gather the whole Klai Yisrael for the thunder and lightning show? What, only if we make a big thunder and lightning show it can rain? What do they have to do with the rain? And number four, why specifically a small little cloud. Okay? Now I'm going to test you on high school earth science. Okay? Where do clouds come from? Where does rain come from? You know the song evaporation, precipitation, you remember that song? Okay. Evaporation, precipitation, the sun, which is 93 million miles away from this planet, shooting light at the speed of 186,000 miles per second, heats up the ocean, and the water evaporates, and it forms clouds. The only thing is, if the clouds are going to be over the ocean, what good is it going to be if it's going to rain over the ocean? Then God created a big fan called the wind. It blows it over the land. Rain falls, right? Wrong. That's what they taught you. But now you're going to learn where rain really comes from. You ever hear somebody, you know, you give somebody a big mouthful, and they say, you know, that was a lot of hot air. It's true. It was a lot of hot air. And when people talk, it produces a feel. In the winter, when you're walking in the, the winter, you talk, you breathe, you see smoke. Where does that smoke go? Your smoke and my smoke and his smoke and her smoke, all that smoke gathers into the heavens and forms clouds. You hear such a thing? Clouds are formed from Hevel Piv Shal Bnei Adam. Clouds are formed from man. Ah, the Chassam Soifer says that's not what the Gemara says. The Gemara says that the clouds draw forth the water from the ocean. They're both true. They're both true. And the Chassam Soifer says, he doesn't just say I'm making that. This is what the Chassam Soifer says. Aval ha'enyin ki adua shehagishamim mishavim b'teva. Clouds form naturally me'idim ha'olem me'ha'aretz from the hot air that goes up from the earth, the hevel pe'an she'ha'olam, and from the heat, from the mouths of people. And even though this is only a small element of rain, and the ichor is from what you learned in earth science, but it is definitely true that clouds are formed from the speech of man. Now look what he says. The Hayois Kane, since this is true. Hachush, experience the Haseichel and common sense Yayat, it teaches us. The Psalm service has a frightening thing. If the words that we speak are Lashon Hara, Sheker, by davening, Dvaram Nevalim, Meitzi Shemra, Gaiva, Leitzanos, Chanifos, and all the other assorted Dvaram HaAsurim. So what you're doing is you are creating contaminated, you're sending contaminated hot air into the atmosphere. All of this contaminated air is creating contaminated poisonous clouds. Now, some server says, this is not a drush. 
experience. Sometimes that I've been around. And my common sense tells me when people speak improper words, it creates polluted, contaminated clouds. Toxic clouds. Uh, okay. That doesn't create. Oh, that does. That does. But when people speak improper things, it creates toxic clouds. Now, guess what happens to the rain that is, falls down from these toxic clouds? It's toxic water. And guess what happens to the fruit and the food and the bread that's created from this toxic water? The food is poisonous. It's toxic. It's contaminated. And guess what happens to the people who eat the food? They become toxic, contaminated, and polluted. And as many Averos as they did before, it's nothing compared to the Averos they're going to do now that they eat the contaminated, toxic, and poisonous food. And let me tell you something. And now that they eat the contaminated, toxic, poisonous food, guess what they're going to be talking about? Worse Lush and Hara, and worse Rechilus, and worse Sheker, and they're going to talk by davening even more. And guess what kind of clouds they're going to produce? Much more toxic, much more contaminated, much more polluted. And guess what's going to happen to those clouds? They're going to turn even more toxic, contaminated, and polluted. And guess what's going to happen to the rain? It's going to be even more toxic. And guess what's going to happen to the food? It's going to be even worse. And guess what people are going to start talking about now? Now they're going to talk about much worse things. And guess... And it's a never-ending vicious cycle where the people contaminate the atmosphere, that contaminates the clouds, that contaminates the rain, that contaminates the food, that contaminates the people even worse, and it's a chayzer v'chalil, it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. What does he do with droughts? And guess what God has to do? He has to stop the cycle. How is he going to stop the cycle? Now listen to how the way Chassam Soifer reads a pasuk in Chumash. He says... You're going to start bowing down to idols. You're going to be saying, you know, saying guba juba stuff. And you're going to be contaminating the atmosphere. Either v'yatsar es hashamayim, either God has to stop the cycle. Basically what? Say, clouds, I'm not going to let you form. I'm not going to let you form. So if God's not going to let them form, so he's not going to allow the world to have rain until people humble themselves and improve. Or, or he's going to have to destroy. It's one or the other. Nobody's speaking. No, people are saying that there are no clouds forming. He's going to stop the cycle. So, no, yeah. So it's one of two things. It's not the Atsar Sashemai Vayi Matar, but is the other option. It's either V'yatsar HaShemayim, he's going to stop the cycle, or V'avad HaTemahira. Right, the V'yatsar or. Says the Chassam Sarvi, that's what the Gemara means. Malkaish, Malkaish are the later rains, Shemo Kash Yusein Sho Yisrael. It circumcises the stiff-neckedness, the stubbornness of Klai Yisrael. Now what happened in the time of Achav? In the time of Achav, the world was so bad, it wouldn't even help if God would stop the cycle. He was going to destroy the world. However, but when Achav started mocking Elio that the curses of God are not going to come true, so you know what Elio said? You know what? We're going to have to stop the cycle. And God brought drought to the world, and the cycle was stopped. And Elio says, you know what's going to happen now? Listen to this. Now, in order for it to rain, it will only rain ki im lefi divari. Only based on what I say. God will set up like a special channel that only my words could create the rain because no one else's words are any good. So therefore, when it came time to rain, what did Eliyahu Navi do? He gathered together all of Kla Yisrael. And all of Kla Yisrael said three words. Hashem hu halakim. Hashem hu halakim. And that Thunder and lightning show. That massive convocation. Those words went up to heaven and the rain was created just with those words that Klai Yisrael said at Harakarma. And that's why the whole heavens did not cluster with clouds. Only one small little cloud came down. Why? That was the cloud created from the words that were said by Klai Yisrael at Harakarma. So we're learning... An unbelievable idea. Yeah, you're going to say it over, right? 
That. No, no, no. They're not going because they're. The, they're not going because they don't want it to rain like like it rained in the time of Lacha. So the Chassam Sofer is teaching us that as much as you may think that rain is created naturally, the speech of man affects the quality of rain. Oh. Now, by the way, this is not only the Chassam Sofer. I don't know if the people wouldn't be able to talk. That would be, a, that would be an improvement. Improve. You wouldn't need Poland spring water. Yeah. Another thing is, yeah. Let's say the, the curses and the proof has been to, to the Jewish people. What about the Goyim? They're not, they're not they're they're not they don't they can't pollute as much as we can. That's why they don't count. They don't pollute as much as we do. They don't pollute. In the meantime, they're not pollute. In the meantime, there's a billion and a half Chinese. In course, a billion and a half Indians. And we are, we are, we are guilty. We are guilty. Oh. Listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. The Gemara says in Brachas that Rava, okay, you had this in the Daf pretty recently, that on a cloudy day, Rava never made a Tainus. Why? Because there's a Pasuk in Eicha, Sa'koisa be'anan lach me'avar tefillah. God clouds out our prayer from getting through. Sa'koisa be'anan lach. God protects with a cloud. He cl- he. He Covers seals off, off with the cloud from Tfila going through. Rava le Gazar Tanisa Biyoyma Deiva Mishem Shenemar Sakoisa Beanan Lach Meyavar Tfila. Says Rabbi Yenison Ibishitz, which cloud is this? Hashem blocks our Tfila with a cloud? Which cloud? Says Rabbi Yenison Ibishitz, the cloud that we created. Which cloud did we create? Says Rabbi Yenison Ibishitz. What's the cloud? Who Adim? It's the mist, the hevel, and the air. The same ideas as the Chassam Sefer. That when a person speaks in proper words, it creates a crowd. Especially idle chatter in a shul. It creates a cloud, and that cloud prevents tefillah from penetrating. Sam Sefer says that if a person davens afterwards with kavana and with bechiyos, it's able to bring up all the lost and trapped tefillahs that didn't go through the first time. But what we see from Rabbi Yenis and Abishis is the same idea, that the speech of man creates clouds. So we see an amazing thing. That in order for rain to be good and proper and beneficent and beneficial to the world, spiritually beneficial to Yisrael, it needs to come from a mouth that is pure. So we're going to see something amazing. There's a Pasuk in Sefer Tehillim. The Pasuk says, Titzbenem besuka meriv l'shainais. Parak Lamanav. He protects with a sukkah from the quarrel of tongues. Somehow, David Amel seems to be telling us that sukkah is a protection, is a shemira from Lashon Hara. In fact, Mishabrua writes, right, the Chavaz Chaim will, will never lose an opportunity to warn us about the ills of Lashon Hara. So in the Mishabrua, Mishabrua tells us, Ulufi shekedusha sasukah gedoy l'ma'od. Because the sanctity of the sukkah is very great. Roi l'ma'id ba b'divrei chayol. It is proper for a person not to speak about secular topics so much. Uladaber ba kiim kedusha v'tayra. To speak in the sukkah only words of holiness and words of Torah. B'kol shekein, certainly. She yezar miladaber shom lashon haru chilos. Certainly to be careful not to speak words of Lashon Haran Rechilos. Ushar Diburim Asurim. But we see there's this concept somehow that Sukkah protects us from Lashon Haran. Says the Vilna Gain, an incredible idea. If you take the letters of Sukkah, Samach, Vav, Kaf, 
Hey, we know we have five parts of the mouth. What are the five parts of the mouth? We have the teeth. We have the lips. We have the palate. We have the throat. What's the palate? But what else do we have? The tongue. Says the Vilna Gain. Mitzvah, sukkah, he, kede, lachnia, yitzra, deloshen hara. The benefit of the sukkah is it subdues the urge to speak lashon hara. How? Because the word sukkah, you have letters that represent four parts of the mouth. Samach, say the samach. Samach is produced with the teeth, right? Any speech therapists over here? Samach is produced from the teeth, like the zayin, samach, shin, resh, sadi. That's the samach. The vav is from the lips, v, v, the lips. From bays, vav, mem, pe, bumps. Yeah. The kaf of the sukkah are from the the oisiyah gimel yirchaf kuf, which emanate from the palate. G, g, and the hay. The hay is from the as a guttural sound from the throat, but it comes out that no syllable, no letter in the word sukkah comes from the tongue. Umimotze comes out. Dalit tes lamin nun tuf are the five letters that come hayotzos mehalashon. They come from the tongue. Ain nimtza b'teva sukkah. You don't have that represented in the word sukkah. You know why? Because the four sounds of samach, vav, kof, hey, cover over the tongue and guard it that the tongue should not break out of its breach. That's the Indian of sukkah. That's what it means, says the Vilna Gun in the Pasuk, titzmenem besukkah meriv l'shainais. God protects through the sukkah from the tongue going out. By the way, says the Vilna Gun, why is sukkah keneged the gula hasida? Because since the gula hasida will only come if we rectify lashon hara, therefore, in order for the gula to come, we need to correct the avera of lashon hara. That's why sukkah is reflective and is symbolic of the gula hachrena. So we see, sukkah is a time we need to be working on. The words we say. I'll tell you something even more. We know the Dalad Minim represent four parts of the body. The Esrog represents the heart. The Hadassim represent the eyes. The Lula represents the spine. The Arava is the, t- is the mouth, the lips. What do we do with the Arava at the end of Sukkot? We whack it on the floor. Why do we whack the Arava on the floor? Now, this what I'm about to tell you is not from an Achrain, it's not from a Rishain, it's a Tshuva in the Goinim. The Tshuva Sa Goinim, from Rav Tzemach Goin. He says in number 10, Ushe Sha'altem, Le'inyin Arava. You asked about the Arava, can someone tell me why in the world, yeah, can you imagine if we had on a holiday, we would take our tzitzis and start smacking them on the floor? Imagine if one day we'd come into the show, take a matzah and start banging it, you know, pulverizing the matzah, right? Imagine if after so you take the shoifer and, you know, start smashing it against the wall. That's a, right? You, you, we would have to carry you out of the shul and, and institutionalize you, right? But with the arava, what do we do? We all, we buy extra aravas. Why? To pulverize them. Right? And to stain the carpets of the shul, right? <laughs> what? What's that all about? Could someone tell me what in the world are we doing? The lips are the arava similar to the lips. The arava comes to. It looks like lips. It looks like it. It looks like it. It has two parts with a slit in the middle. That's what the medrash says. Mikan v'halu. We're saying from now and on. Yitain ba'afar pihu ula yesh tikva. Maybe we'll finally learn the lesson to keep our mouths closed. 
Maybe after sitting in the sukkah for seven days wondering why you have the four sounds where no, with no sound of the lip, right? Like the Vilna Gaon said, nothing with the Dalit test, Lam and Nun Taf. It's a time where we sit in the sukkah and the sukkah is supposed to protect us from Lashon Hara. We finally commit to ourselves, you know what? Maybe finally we're going to keep our mouth closed for a chance after saying maybe a hundred times over Yom Kippur, Achet Yotam Fanecha, Bebitois Vasayim, Besiach Sivsayseno, Belashen Hara. Right? As many chatam as we, we confess on Yom Kippur, no chet comes close to the amount of times we confess what we've done with our lips. And after Sukkot is over, we say, that's it. We're going to take our lips and we're going to pulverize them. That's it. We're not going to speak Lashon Hara anymore. We're going to be careful. What we say is only the truth. We're going to be careful not to, not to speak Sheker, not to speak by davening. However, now, now that we've corrected our mouth for seven days, guess what we're ready to daven for? The rain. Now we're ready to daven for the rain we would like to suggest. You know why Chazal specifically designated Tfilas Geshem at the end of Sukkot? Because after we've spent a whole Yom Tif sitting in the Sukkah, Tits B'neim B'Sukkah Meiriv L'Shoinos, and we take that Arava and we pulverize it, and we finally commit ourselves not to use our mouth for the wrong thing. By the way, the Tshuvas HaGoyinim gives another reason why we take the Arava and we pulverize it. Because you know what it represents? The mouth of the Satan. The mouth of the Satan. And now that we finally did all the Avoidah of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot, the Satan has been silenced. So these are two reasons. Just think about it. Two reasons why we take the Arava. One is, we say we're going to be quiet. One is, we say the Satan's going to be quiet. But I would say they go hand in hand. Because the Chavaz Chaim tells us, when we ask Yibam Shem, silence all of the accusers against us, Chavaz Chaim says it's dependent on us. If we are careful not to accuse and place accusations against our friends, then the Satan has nothing to say against us. God says, keep your mouth closed. This, this gentleman over here will not accuse a fellow Jew. But if Chas a person always has divre kategoria and, and is a de lartar, is a, is a tattle bearer, so then the Satan has free reign. So I believe these two reasons go hand in hand. So after a whole Yom Tif of Sukkot, now we're ready to pray for rain. Why? Because now we could create good rain, beneficial rain. If we spent the whole seven days being careful with what we say, how we say it, to speak only words of Kedusha, not to speak Lashon Hara, now that we've rectified this, now we're ready to daven for rain. Now, we're going to say something also very interesting. And that is... You know, uh, Reb Nechemia Kornitzer, in the Drashas of Yosef Nechemia, he has a very interesting idea. He says, you know, he, he says, Sukkot is analogous to a patient who had a major heart operation. And um, a, a month after the operation, he goes to the doctor. He says, Doc, I don't understand. I'm just not feeling myself. So the doc takes all the tests. He says, no, your heart rate is perfect. I took the cardiac echo. Everything is fine. The surgery was perfect. You know what the problem is? You need to re- invigorate yourself. You, you need to invigorate yourself. Just You need to go on vacation. Go up to the Swiss Alps. Go to the Canadian Rockies. Breathe in that healthy air and you'll be as good as new. There's nothing clinically wrong. There's nothing functionally wrong. You just need to breathe in that fresh air. Says Rabbi Yisim Nechem Yekornetzar. That's the sukkah. The sukkah is a small little home where we spend seven days in the Yitzilah de Nehemenusa, in the shade of God, and we breathe in that spiritually invigorating air that we're producing, perhaps, through being careful from Lashon Hara, being careful from Dvarim HaAsurim, by speaking Divrei Kedusha. So perhaps Rabbi said, we could say Al-Pidrush, they're both true. Sukkos Mamish, and that Aniyakov. Because if we're able to sit in our Sukkot Mamish, the way we're supposed to, and guard ourselves from Lashon Hara, and guard ourselves from Dvar Masurim, and produce what the Chassam Sofer and the Rabbi Yonason Ayyubi should say are the good type of air, 
that will create the Anane HaKavod. That will create the spiritual clouds. And now that we've created these Anani HaKavod, guess what it's time to daven for? That's why Sukkot concludes with Tefillah HaSgeshem. Because now we're ready to daven for rain. And this kind of rain is going to be beneficial rain. Rabbi Isai, let me just conclude with a few things. Chavetz Chaim tells us that if the second Beis HaMikdash was destroyed because of Lashon Hara, it will never be rebuilt until we rectify that. And the Chavetz Chaim says, look what he says, he says, frightening words. Look at number 11. V'yim Kain, al karchacha sha'anu tzrichim l'heschazik l'sakein achir hazeh. We need to strengthen ourselves to fix this avera. Da'hainu l'hizar sh'loy l'hikashabai. To be careful not to stumble. You know why? The ad masai yeah, Begoyla. Because how long do we have to be here? Therefore, on Sukkot, where the Vilna Gaon says, the Tachlas of the Sukkah is Titzbenim, the Sukkah may rev the Shainas. It protects us from Lashon Hara. We smack, we pulverize the Aravas to say, you know what, we're going to be careful about now. This is the Yom Tif that it's time to daven. Harachamun, hu yakim lanu, esukas, David Hanoifa. This is the Yom Tif that we're able to come to Rebbe Hashem and Daven for the rebuilding of the third base of English. And we could add, it's very interesting. In Parshas Re, it says Chag Hasukais Taselach. It doesn't say Chag Hasukais Aselacha. It says Chag Hasukais Taselach. There is a psikta that's quoted in the Ran in Parshas Vayera. It says Ta'as Elach and doesn't say Asay that anyone who sits in a sukkah this year will be Zoycha to sit the next year. The question is, so then you'll be sitting in sukkahs forever. <laughs> right? Because if you sit this year, you'll sit next year. And if you sit next year, that means you'll sit the year after. But many commentaries say that sukkah, the mitzvah sukkah is a school of Arichas Yomim. The Rav Chaim Falaji brings down from the Arizal that which ois in the Aleph Beis is, re- represents the sukkah. Sukkah has to have three walls. The Beis. The Beis. A Beis is made out of three Vavs. Vav, Vav, Vav. A total of 18. Chai! Sitting in the sukkah is a skula for Arich HaSyamim. The Arizal says... The Reb Naftali Mirapshut says, maybe you'll say this over also, that it says, Kol HaEzrach Yisrael. Ezrach is a lesson of Zikna. That through sitting in the sukkah, a person merits to become a, a Zakein. What's the Pshat? Because if the purpose of the sukkah is tips the name, the sukkah may rive Lashainas, protects a person from Lashon Hara, we know from Tehillim, Mi HaEish HaChafetz Chaim, Nitzar, Lashoncha, Meira, so that's part of the school of the mitzvah of sukkah. It protects us from saying improper things if a person pays heed to the message of the sukkah. And that's why the Yom Tif of Sukkot concludes for the tefillah of Geshem. This way we're able to daven for a good rain. And now we're able to daven. Harachaman, huyakim lonu, as sukkah stavid, hanoi falas. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.